Zinc is like the mystery mineral. It's like no one really knows the whole story with zinc. And it rears its head sometimes and we're like, wow, zinc is amazing. And then other times we're like, oh gosh, we don't want to have too much zinc. So let's clear some stuff up and let's just have a clear understanding of what zinc is doing in your body. Because I will tell you, it's super important, but it's probably not something that you want to go load up a bunch with via supplement. It's all about a delicate balance and homeostasis within your body. This is going to be a cool video. I think you're going to learn a lot. Hey, before we do dive into the science, please do hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon and click that box that says all notifications. That way you never miss a beat. You get a little ping every time I post a daily video. I also want to recommend that you check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They are super awesome. A huge supporter of this channel. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So your groceries get delivered right to your doorstep. And I've been able to assemble specific boxes for keto, for fasting, for thyroid support, things like that, where they're groceries that I would recommend you get. So it's like going grocery shopping with me. And honestly, it's pretty darn cool. So it gets delivered right to your doorstep. So huge supporter of this channel. So thank you, Thrive Market. And thank you for giving cool opportunities to the people that watch my videos as well. Check them out after we get through the science. First thing we have to talk about is inflammation. Now, I tread lightly surrounding the world of inflammation because I don't want people to get the wrong idea. Inflammation, to some degree, is good. We just don't want too much of it. Well, the journal Nutrition published an interesting study surrounding the world of zinc and inflammation. See, it has to do with something called nuclear factor kappa B. Now, before you turn off this video thinking this is going to be crazy sciencey, I am going to bring this all back down to earth. Nuclear factor kappa B is sort of like a genetic, like, overarching view of inflammation, okay? Nuclear factor kappa B attaches to DNA and triggers an inflammatory response sort of at that genetic level. So what we want to make sure is happening within our body to the best of our ability is that nuclear factor kappa B is just under control, right? So it turns out that zinc can suppress this nuclear factor kappa B, this sort of genetic inflammation, if you want to call it that, by stimulating a protein called A20. So A20 directly prevents the modulation of nuclear factor kappa B. So it means it kind of gets in the way to make sure that nuclear factor kappa B doesn't just go overboard. So in studies, we've seen that zinc supplementation may suppress interleukin-1 beta and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which are inflammatory cytokines. So long story short, indirectly through the just suppression of nuclear factor kappa B via A20, we see that inflammatory cytokines, basically the response to inflammation, end up suppressed when zinc is in the equation, which implies that zinc is very important to inflammatory modulation. So hear me out. We're going to get a little bit deeper, but it's also going to be a little bit more fun. All right, so now we talk about something called PPAR alpha. PPAR is a protein that is upregulated usually during like fasting or ketogenic diet or caloric restriction. It's actually a really cool protein. And what it does is it's, it's liberated when fatty acids are put into the bloodstream and it has all these different positive downstream processes that can actually allow us to burn fat. But that's a story for a different day. Turns out that PPAR expression is upregulated by zinc. So when we have zinc in the equation, we potentially have more of this PPAR alpha, which again, can be good for fat loss, but also has a role with the immune system and inflammation. So hear me out. Remember how I talked about nuclear factor kappa B and how it affects the DNA? Well, nuclear factor kappa B binds to the DNA. And once nuclear factor kappa B binds to the DNA, it dictates what the DNA is going to do as far as like inflammation and its response. A simple analogy, or it's not really simple, but a fun analogy would be like a criminal grabbing a hostage and holding that hostage tight and then making the hostage do whatever the criminal wants it to do. That's kind of how nuclear factor kappa B acts with the DNA. Okay, PPAR alpha acts as a shield between the criminal and the hostage. So PPAR alpha would make it so that the nuclear factor kappa B doesn't ever really bind to the DNA or doesn't bind to it as much. Full disclaimer, it's very important that you know that we don't want to stop inflammation altogether. All we're trying to do is keep homeostasis. We want the body to be able to manage its own inflammation so it doesn't go out of control. And this will all make sense as I get a little further down in this video. So with that being said, let's talk about macrophages, white blood cells. All right, so zinc is going to be very critical for these white blood cells because again, zinc is going to be a modulator of inflammation. It's like our body's built-in regulator. So when our macrophages get acted upon by a pathogen and there ends up being this activation of nuclear factor kappa B, we have the upregulation or the increase in a ZIP transporter. It's called a ZIP-8 transporter, which transports zinc. Okay, now it's the job of this ZIP-8 transporter to, well, pump zinc into the immune cell. The immune cell says, hey, I've got inflammation happening here. I need a little bit of help. I need a little bit of help. It's like zinc in a way is nature's built-in anti-inflammatory within our body, right? So the zinc comes in and it controls the inflammation so that it doesn't go too awry. 
This has been demonstrated in studies with zinc deficient mice. So you take a look at mice that are, well, deficient in zinc, and when they are exposed to bacteria and they end up with sepsis, they have excessive inflammation. Because why? The body just continues to create inflammation because it doesn't have zinc as a modulator. So this is actually really cool and demonstrates that our bodies have their own ability to increase inflammation and to quell inflammation at the proper time. That's why the right amount of zinc in our diet is so imperative because when we first get exposed to a pathogen or any kind of, even, even stress or trauma from a workout, we need inflammation to trigger the right immune response, the right recovery. But if it gets out of control, then we have a problem. And that's where the Zip8 transporters pump that in, pump the zinc in, and the zinc says, okay, hey, hold your horses, let's stop the binding to the DNA for a minute, chill out on the inflammation, and just get back to work. But then there's another cool piece that we have to talk about in the world of zinc education, and that's the membrane of our cells, especially in the lungs and in the intestinal tract. We have these epithelial cells, and they protect as sort of a barrier, right, with the lungs and the intestinal tract. You probably hear me talk about it a lot with my gut health videos. The epithelial cells form a tight junction that protects the rest of the body from the harmful pathogens that are in our gut. Well, we also have this happening within our lungs, and it's been coined as the lung microbiome, which is a complex video that's above my pay grade, to be completely honest. Point is, is that it's been demonstrated that zinc plays a role in the structure of that membrane. Well, the Journal of Nutrition demonstrated that zinc-deprived cells ended up degrading faster in the way of proteins in the membrane than cells that weren't zinc deficient. And it demonstrated that zinc supplementation may help restore that. So then the question comes to be, should you be supplementing zinc? The hard part is, without really knowing what is happening at a cellular level at a given point in time, it's very difficult to say so. It's really easy to think that this zinc is an amazing thing and it's gonna boost our immune system, but it doesn't really boost our immune system like a lot of people will say. It plays a role in the proper modulation of our immune system. Okay, if we have everything that we need for our cells to fight off a pathogen or to fight uh, stress and to able to instill recovery, then the zip aid and the zinc and all that's gonna come into effect to make sure it doesn't go overboard. So what we need to do is you need to make sure that you're eating a diet that is rich in zinc, but also make sure that you're not going overboard. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of supplementing zinc unless you know what you're doing and you know how much you're really taking in. And quite honestly, it's above my pay grade to really be recommending a specific amount because it's gonna be a really wide response depending on who you are. The point is, eat a diet that's rich in zinc, get your nuts, get your sprouted seeds in, get your fatty fish in, get your sardines, things like that, so that you can get a healthy amount and keep it balanced with the other minerals that coincide with it. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.